Yellowstone volcano, while USGS scientists warned an ash cloud from Yellowstone eruption could reach the stratosphere. Callum Hoare, Express UK reports, the Yellowstone supervolcano could cause an eruption. The cloud would reach as high as the stratosphere concerning the uh, statements from scientists who warned dur the, during his uh, explanations and lecture. The Yellowstone caldera is a supervolcano lying below Yellowstone National Park. It sits between the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and is constantly being monitored by the USGS due to its cap capability to inflict disaster on a global scale if a super eruption occurred. An eruption of this kind has not occurred for more than 630,000 years, even though we had a lesser eruption 70,000 years ago and 80 additional eruptions since then. Yet scientists are still concerned over the effects it could have on the Earth. Larry Mastin, USGS hydrologist, worked with fellow colleague Jacob Lowenstern in 2016 to produce a paper on the ash fall impacts in the event of another super eruption. Speaking during the public lecture that year, he explained why Yellowstone is rated the highest on the volcanic explosivity index, VEI. He said, volcanologists took a look at eruptions at the range of sizes and they tried to tank them and have them develop this ranking system. This was developed for explosive eruptions, those that produce ash and tephra. He said, I guess it's kind of like the Richter scale for earthquakes, except that there are some measures of the earthquake. This scale is a measure both of the eruption size in terms of volume and also intensity. So here is really two criteria they use. The plume height, which is a proxy for the intensity and the volume of the magma. Dr. Masson went on to rank some of the most famous large eruptions to have occurred in the last century and where Yellowstone would sit in comparison. He added, so on this scale, Mount Etna would be a 2. The uh, Iceland volcano, Ayafjallajökull would be a 4. Mount St. Helens, a 5 and Pinatumbo, a six. As you go higher in this VEI scale, these eruptions become less frequent. A VEI five like Mount St. Helens happened once per decade on Earth. And a VEI six occurs perhaps a few times a century. We can go all the way down to an eight, a Yellowstone super eruption which occurs less than once every 10,000 years. Dr. Mastin then showed a diagram of the plume reaching above the stratosphere, which sits at 20,000 meters from the Earth's surface. He continued saying, we know from both theoretical arguments and empirical from observation of plumes that higher plumes are an indication of even bigger eruptions. You can clearly see there is an increase in plume height as the eruption goes up on the scale, of course. One of the things I wanted to point out is that planes fly at about 10,000 meters altitude, that's about 30,000 feet. That's a typical jet cruise altitude. If you were flying when Pinatumbo was erupting, you would be looking up at a plume that would look almost as high as it did from the ground. It comes after Dr. Mastin also predicted the effects of a month-long eruption in the U.S., claiming the effects would show little difference to that of a three-day eruption. He said, in these simulations, you can see that over a three-day period, this umbrella cloud covers most of the uh, of North American continent. Then it gradually disperses with wind patterns, so you can look at the tephra deposit in these four different three-day simulations. One in January, one in April, and one in July, and one in October. The pale yellow is 1 to 3 millimeters, 3 to 10 is 10 to 30, 30 to 100, 100 to 300, and the dark regions are over a meter of ash. If you go to a one-week duration, the pattern looks pretty similar, and for one month, it is fairly the same. But as you go to one month, 
we're decreasing the average eruption rate, which is weakening the growth of the umbrella cloud. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.